Hello, everybody. Welcome to our sixth Zoom program about the Living Quilt for Sojourner Truth Art Project here in Sacramento, California. And today, we're coming to you live from the Sojourner Truth Community Garden. sign here behind me of Truth Community Garden. This is part of the City of Sacramento's um, Community Garden Program. And People in the community can uh, choose a plot inside here and grow vegetables or flowers in their own garden. So we are really excited um, to be working with the community garden and the city parks department to do this artist in residency project in Sacramento, California. And um, I just wanted you to get a look at the garden and now I'm going to take you down to the site where we are making the bed or the living quilt for Sojourner Truth. In today's program, we're going to show you how to weave uh, the headboard and footboard for the bed. And then on Saturday of this week, we'll be installing the living quilt, which is handmade paper with seeds for wildflowers. Okay, I'm going to take my computer now and move down to the site. And while we're walking, I'll talk a little bit about how you get to the, the site of the art project. You come into the parking lot from uh, Gloria Drive, and it's right by a PG&E um, power station and you come to the back of the parking lot. And on the other side of this parking lot, there is a softball field. So, um, you know, hopefully a lot of people who come out to watch a softball game will also get to see this artwork. And across from us here in the parking lot, you can see part of the School of Engineering and Sciences, which is part of the city of Sacramento's um, school district. And, you know, my plan was when I uh, started doing this project before COVID, we were going to work with the students to do the paper making and the making of the bed. But with COVID, we've had to do everything virtually. So that's why I started doing this series of Zoom programs. Okay, we're coming uh, to the other side of the community garden. You can see it over behind me. And then I have the selected site for the flower bed I'm making for the living quilt for Sojourner Truth. I'm going to set the computer here on the table. And then I'm going to um, talk to you about the bed. You can see it's in progress here and will be finished by Saturday. The installation of the quilt will be Saturday at 2 o'clock. And um, we have started making this is the footboard and up here you You have to deal with all kinds of things, the weather, the wind, the sun, um, you know, whatever. And yesterday we did have a lot of rain here. Hopefully it's not going to start raining again. The wind is picking up a bit, but hopefully we'll be okay with that. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about choosing the site for the artwork. When I came here, this was just a field of weeds and mostly dirt and it didn't look very appealing. And so we thought about it, but it was really a nice site. We wanted to get um, some place that had full sun. 
because wildflowers grow much better when you have full sun. So I talked to the parks department guy here and he agreed we could trim a few of those branches so it would let in a little more sun to this area where we had thought would be good to put the bed. And then another thing you have to decide is how you want it. You could turn it, you know, many different ways. Um, and I decided this kind of diagonal would be good, having the footboard here. And most of the time, the people who view this will come in from this parking lot and then be able to walk over here and walk around the bed if they want to and see it clearly. And so I thought it would be better to turn it a little bit diagonal than to have it straight that way or straight that way. And let's see, the other things about the site, you want to be sure it has good drainage. Uh, you know, for a lot of rain coming in here, that it wouldn't be like a flood zone and standing water in the flower bed. And it, here in Sacramento, we do have to be careful that we have enough water. So I asked if they could put in uh, a sprinkler here. And so they were very agreeable and just tinted the sprinkler a little bit. So now we have um, a source for watering the flowers. bit of water at least in the first few weeks when the young plants are coming up. After they get you know a foot or so tall then you don't need to have um, so much water. Okay um, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is how you get started with this kind of project. I ordered um, eight foot boards and they're two by eight inches and ten foot boards so you get two eight foot boards and two ten foot boards and then we put them together with long screws and we did that out in the parking lot because it was a nice flat area and you know easy to put it together and I had already come here several weeks ago and staked out where I wanted to have the bed and measured it. So it's an 8 foot by 10 foot bed. And um, after we put it together in the parking lot, I had to get about four people and lift it up and put it in this spot. And then we had to level it a bit because it was low on one side. So we put a rock under one side and then filled it in with dirt. and then yesterday they put in the mulch so it wouldn't be muddy around here after the rain. So there are you know, a lot of things to think about. I ordered um, raised bed potting soil from Home Depot locally here and they delivered it um, on Monday and we filled in this bed and tried to get it level. And once we finished the headboard and footboard we went and brought the Sticking up really tall, and I put, put them in, so I 
bent them over. I wanted to have a nice curve in the headboard and the footboard. So, you know, this material is pretty easy to do on without breaking too much. And, um, you know, that's another part of this, is choosing the right material. And all of these branches you can see that we can use are from a mulberry tree. And um, this mulberry tree is growing in Sacramento. My brother lives in Sacramento in a different part of town, but he had a neighbor that had a really good tree. And one time when I was visiting, I saw it and thought, wow, well, that's a great tree for, for um, leaving the headboard and the footboard. And you can see these branches have been picked with several weeds, but they're still very flexible. And you can see that it will eventually break, but it's, it's pretty flexible. And other times in different communities where I've done this kind of project, I've used willow and you know, olive branches, even whatever is local is good to, to use for this sort of thing. Um, and when you pick the branches and take them off the tree, usually you clean off all of the knots. So it's going to be as smooth as possible to go into the, the structure. And, you know, it's like weaving a big basket, really. You go in and out, in and out. And, um, you know, sometimes it helps to have another person on the other side. You want to come help, Chrissy? We had a few basket makers from the community here earlier this morning. And, um, it was good. So this pushing is back. back and I'll keep in. pushing it. Yeah. So we're going to go in and out, in and out to weave this in here. So I'm going to come there. And you know, one person going in and out with it, and one person helping to push it. It sometimes gets hung up in here, but. We'll try to go a little bit further. Yeah, okay. I'm still holding it up. Oh, boy. I'll just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> one person. Yeah, one person. <laughs> and then, you know, this end, we can either cut it off or try to bend it around or go down into the ground. With it. So, um, the other materials we're using in this um, headboard and footboard. Um, are some local grapevine. And this is a piece of grapevine that was brought here by one of the volunteers. Um, and she saves these materials because she is a basket maker and grows different materials in her garden. And we're just adding them in here as sort of a way to give it some different color and different texture. And also make it um, you know, more about what we have here in Sacramento, California. It's a big wine area. So I brought the grapevines here. And this, you know, is a little bit harder to weave in and out because it does have the parts on it, but that makes it really easy. Headboard and footboard are all natural materials, so they too will biodegrade over time and um, not be harmful to the environment. All of the works that I do, I try to make you know, the materials that I use the way I use them to be good for the environment. You know, putting the handmade paper with the seed.
And if you soak, uh, this material is kind of dry, but it rained yesterday. We left it outside and got it a little bit wet, which was actually good. Um, makes it a little more flexible than it would if it was really dry. But you can soak the material to do it, but it's best, I find, to use material that's more fresh. And then, um, This will all shrink a bit as it dries. And I'm going to leave this um, headboard and footboard open enough that the wind can easily pass through it. And you can see it's pretty strong, but it's still flexible. So if you know a big wind comes, it will not, hopefully not knock it over. human interaction with it. Okay. And um, that this is next to a, a softball field and next to a school and a library and a community garden. So it's nice that there will be a lot of people who will be able to see it. But um, you also have to make sure that they know what it is and that you know it's something they will be there enjoying it. That it will be uh, taken care of, and hopefully nobody will, you know, try to destroy it or push it down. That's one thing you never are sure about when you do public gardens. But, um, you can see some of the grapevines had the leaves on them today. So that's just part of it. So, Any questions? Anything you wanted to ask me about this? I don't know how much time we have. We have a few minutes here. We have a few people in the Zoom meeting today. So if you have any questions, you can write them in the chat and I can see them. Um, and, you know, we'll just keep working on this um, until Saturday. I mentioned that the um, installation ceremony is Saturday, November 21st at 2 p.m. And what we'll do at the installation ceremony is lay out the quilt squares. And I think all of you have seen the quilt squares being made in the previous Zoom programs. I have 20 of those squares, so it will fill this whole area where you see the flower beds behind me. And um, we'll have three inch white borders between each of the squares. And hopefully in the ceremony on Saturday, we will have people from the community helping to lay down those squares and staking them into the ground. We have to think about a way to stake them in the ground also uh, when this is an outdoor installation because it's just going to be paper with seeds in it laying on the ground and the wind could easily blow that away. So we stake it down with something natural. I use bamboo skewers um, and then put a, a cork, a natural cork from old wine cords on top so it's easy to push it into the earth and stake down the squares. Okay, there's somebody else. Um, yeah, the squares will be held down separately with some sticks. I have those in the car. I could show you some of them. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just get the 12 inch skewers, bamboo, which is a natural material that you use for the barbecue. And then I um, make a hole in the cork and put the cork on one end. And then you can easily push it with the cork on the end. In other places, I've used different things to put down the quilt. Okay. Um, in uh, Southern California, when I was in Lancaster, I used um, branches from the, what is that, the Joshua tree, which is very so I try to use something local, 
but here I'm using the bamboo skewers with recycled wine corks on top of it to stake it in. Uh, the park administrators, um, they were very nice to help us. Uh, and they cleared all the weeds and helped to level this up um, to prepare for the installation. And they're still working on the mulch here. They've got more than spread out, so we won't have a lot of mud here in case it does rain again in the next few days. So it's very important with this kind of project to have a little bit of support. Um, in some places, I haven't had much support when I do this kind of project. And I've had to do, you know, a lot of the shoveling and moving earth myself. But here, my brother also came over and helped one day. So it was very nice. Yeah, any other questions? I think we're about out of time. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera off now. Your camera on. And my camera on. Okay, start video. And then take Tim's off. Alright. Alright, you can see me now. It's bright and sunny now, but yesterday it was uh, rainy all the afternoon. It was pretty good in the morning. So does anybody have any other question before we sign off here? Yeah, when you put this in, you want to have a clear spot. You know, in some places it's been in a park where there was grass. You take the grass up and then use it somewhere else in the park. And then, you know, put the raised bed just on the, the bare soil. And I have also put down cardboard underneath the soil. Oh, here are some of the um, bamboo skewers with the recycled wine corks. I cut the wine cork in half so it wouldn't be quite as um, big. And then you can use it and push that easily into the ground. Okay, another question. Who will care for this over the next few years? That's a very important question. And because I am working with the city of Sacramento and their parks department and the community garden program, which is, you know, as you saw right next door, they will take care of it. You know, wildflowers don't really need a lot of care. And I don't usually even uh, thin them out, you know, Sometimes you would thin out the flowers, but it usually I just let the natural process happen. And the only thing you need is water, and you need water um, steadily for the first two weeks or so until the plants sprout and the seedlings get about eight to you know a foot high. Then after that, you know you're planting flower seeds that are either native to this area or that will grow well in this area without um, worrying about too much water or too much hot sun because Sacramento is is very, very hot in the summer and doesn't get much cold in the winter, but they do get a little bit of rain in the winter. So, you know, you pick the seeds and the plants, everything that will work well with whatever site so that you don't need a lot of maintenance. And I like the whole process of natural change and working with nature as a partner so that you don't really have to worry too much about maintenance. You know, in public art, that's always a concern. So uh, this bed will last for many years. The headboard and the footboard um, will eventually also decompose and be mulch and go back into the earth because it's all natural materials. But it will last for a long time. And the flowers that are in the quilt um, will also come back each spring. And I've had some of these, you know, that have lasted for several years until the, the park or whatever site it's in, they decide, well, we think we're going to put something else here now. 
and that's okay. I think of these as temporary and ever-changing projects. So it can look very different in different years. I know one I did in um, Georgia that was near Atlanta. I had put red poppy seeds in the quilt squares and the first year not many of those came up but many of them came up in the second year and it was really nice to see that. So sometimes you know the flowers are perennial or coming back every year and some will just be annuals and it'll be only you know there for one year. And I try not to use anything that will be invasive um, and um, you know, sometimes it's hard to find flowers in the right color and the right size that will bloom at the right time uh, to do this kind of project. And I work with a company called American Meadows. It's a seed company in Vermont, actually, that specializes in wildflower seeds. And they have seeds that will fit, you know, whatever climate or whatever region you're in. Um, and they have been very nice to support this project. They gave me half off on the price of all the seeds that I used in this project. Okay, I think it's um, just about time to end this session. You know, with the Zoom programs, you have a, a certain limit. But if you think of any other questions you want to ask me, you can email me or, um, you know, we can stay in touch um, by computer or email over uh, the time of this project and you know hopefully we'll get pictures to post online continuously to show how the the living quilt for sojourner truth is changing and the flowers are coming up and maybe we'll have a big celebration next spring when we can all get together in person to see the flowers in this flower bed Okay, thank you very much, and I uh, hope you will be able to tune in for the 2 p.m. ceremony uh, for the installation of this project on s this Saturday, November 21st. We will also uh, video that and post it online, so if you can't make it, you can see it later. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.